my name is uh, Roy, Roy Barkan, and uh, we'll talk about uh, alias team today. I, it's, I think it's a relatively uh, subtle and co complex uh, topic, but uh, we can get uh, through it. Um, so, I'll start off with uh, a, s a short uh, quote uh, about from the computer science world. Uh, all problems in computer science can be solved by another level of interaction, except for the problem of too many levels of interaction. This is uh, quite a known uh, uh, quote from uh, our field. It's typically discussed uh, when talking about uh, higher level design and architecture types of uh, uh, problems, but I think it has uh, a little bit of uh, uh, importance and meaning to our topic as well. And uh, this uh, website, levelofinteraction.com, is also uh, near and dear to the hearts of uh, people here in the C++ on C. So uh, if you don't know it, uh, feel free to uh, go on over there. So uh, as I mentioned, my name is uh, Roy, Roy Barkan. Uh, I'm uh, from Israel and live in Tel Aviv. I've uh, been doing uh, C++ for uh, quite a while now. And uh, in the last uh, 10 years or so, I've been working uh, for Easter Research. We're a, a high performance, uh, low latency training company uh, based in Israel. and. Uh, Similarly to other uh, companies like uh, some of our gracious sponsors here, uh, we operate around the world. And uh, if you have uh, any desire to do interesting things in the financial uh, sector, especially in Israel, feel free to reach out to me or just uh, send an email. Um, this is my first uh, on-site international CPFAS conference, uh, so I'm uh, quite excited. And I really encourage you to ask questions, uh, participate, even in the middle of the talk, just raise your hand, uh, just to make sure that you understand and we're all on the same page. So uh, starting it off, uh, what is aliasing? So a basic uh, rough definition is aliasing is the case where we have two variables or two expressions in our code that actually refer to the same memory location and are being used together, okay? Uh, a short uh, example of this will be, let's say I'm creating a string S and then I want to concatenate it to itself, okay? So the implementation of that uh, uh, member function, the operator uh, plus equals, needs to understand that while it's operating on the, this uh, class, on the self that is trying to mutate, the argument that is being given might actually be the same string that is trying to, being, to manipulate uh, at the same time. We need to make sure that uh, nothing uh, wrong will go out, will, will happen as we uh, concatenate a string onto itself. We want, want to make sure that we don't change something uh, prematurely and then uh, try to access it later on. Um, so, basically, this uh, type of uh, connection of aliasing will, is, is a dependency between those two variables that is hidden when you just look at the code, okay? So, when I look at the code, I will see two different variables and two different uh, uh, activities in the code that actually uh, touch the same uh, location in memory, and there's a dependency that doesn't look uh, uh, very apparent when, when someone uh, inspects or does a code review. Um, I want to uh, say up front here that aliasing is not about threads and not about uh, volatile data, okay? Sometimes these things uh, can get confused because they are uh, very often uh, uh, analyzed in a, in a similar fashion. Uh, uh, race conditions between threads and, and volatile information are also cases of these hidden dependencies where things are, might be happening uh, outside of our code base that, that impact us. And with aliasing, things are happening within our code base but are, have an impact where we're not uh, aware of, uh, perhaps. Um, and when we uh, think about aliasing, we want to write alias-aware uh, and alias-conscious code. Um, we need to make sure that uh, we, we keep our code correct and we keep our code uh, efficient uh, and, and fast. And if we are not, uh, um, if we're not uh, careful enough and we're not responsible enough, we can have code that is either incorrect in some cases or correct, but uh, can have uh, uh, some serious performance implications. Okay, so today, uh, a large part of my talk will be examples. I'll try to show uh, quite a few examples of various types of places where aliasing pops up and arises, just to give you a sense of uh, where to look for these things and where these things can uh, potentially bite us. Most of the examples will be about uh, correctness, but some of them will also uh, show you the impact in terms of performance. Um, then I'll dive a little bit about uh, how aliasing is treated from the C++ standard point of view. I'll show you what's uh, uh, legal and what's not legal, what's uh, considered defined behavior and undefined behavior. And then I'll go and uh, try and give us some tips, some tricks uh, as to how to write a code that is aliasing aware, um, how to design our APIs, how to write a, uh, and implement our code, and uh, what ways and things that we have at our disposal that are either part of the standard or maybe not part of the standard and compiler specific. 
And then go and talk a little bit about uh, what the future holds, what the future versions of uh, C++ might uh, uh, do to assist uh, us when we think about aliasing. And uh, uh, I'll end the talk with uh, a little bit of discussion of uh, some uh, design-based aspects where we might want to use aliasing to our advantage, and we can uh, discuss how, if it helps or not. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start it off with a few examples. So the first uh, uh, and relatively simple uh, example that we can look at has to do with uh, a function taking uh, in arguments as well as the uh, output arguments, okay? So this uh, min max function here, it, re it receives two input arguments, uh, i and j, and, two, and uh, should uh, fill out two output arguments, out min and out max. And uh, I'm not sure if you see the, uh, the underscores there. Um, and basically the function tries to fill in the output arguments based on the, the input ones, putting the, the minimal one in one of the outputs and the maximum one in the other. And the, the question arises, what will happen if I create an array of two strings and try to sort them in place using this min max function, okay? So I basically am passing uh, the both elements of the array as the input arguments and also as the output arguments, okay? Similarly, we can have uh, the same effect uh, uh, when using references. This uh, concat example here takes a string, which is the result where I want to concat several other items, several item strings into, and then I use this uh, nifty code uh, fold expression to just call the plus equals uh, operator time after time on the result. Notice that this uh, lambda function itself um, doesn't uh, return anything. It returns void, but it actually mutates the result argument as it goes. Okay, and again, I we would like to ask what happens if we take a hello string and a world string and try to concat uh, the, the world and then another instance of the hello into this, uh, uh, this original string, okay? So uh, obviously we have aliasing here. We can see that uh, in the first example, uh, the first item in the array is being passed twice, it's similarly the, se the second item in the array. And in the second example, um, we see the argument X being passed uh, twice. Uh, and uh, the lambda itself, where it has multiple uh, arguments, multiple variables that they're working on, doesn't know or might not know that the same value is actually being passed several times. Okay, so I assume that you have some idea of uh, what the, uh, this code will do, but let's uh, go to uh, a Goldbolt screenshot uh, to see it. And we can see that uh, the code actually doesn't do what uh, one might expect from, from an initial code review. Okay, so in the first example, what happens is that uh, this... Uh, uh, out mean uh, assignment that happens basically goes and they overwrites the minimum element into the out mean uh, uh, um, member into the, inside the array, and this basically hurts or you know causes the, the max operation to fault completely because uh, this uh, two 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 argument will be explicitly be gone by the time that uh, we try to calculate max. Okay, and similarly um, with the hello world. After we concat uh, x into y, then, then x itself has already been modified, and we concat uh, x again. Instead of getting hello world, hello, we'll get hello world just twice, okay? Great. Um, some more examples, not just uh, from passing arguments into functions, but from aliasing uh, with different uh, places in the uh, language. So first of all, in C++, we have uh, structs and classes and that have members, so uh, the complex uh, uh, object, for example, it has uh, two members, the, the real and imaginary parts of a complex number, and uh, it's totally legal to use a reinterpret cast like this to access the real part of, of the complex number. And if I want to take a complex number and just uh, scale it, multiply it by, the real, by, by a real part, and try to multiply it by the real part of itself, um, then things can go wrong, okay? Because again, um, this uh, multiply equals operator that receives an integer and tries to multiply might not be aware that uh, the integer that it's trying to multiply is actually one of the members th that it needs to modify on its own. Okay, and a uh, similar operation happens when we think about uh, lambda closures. So lambda closures uh, are used here inside this uh, for each algorithm where we take a, a value and take it into, uh, or actually the value, yeah, sorry, we'll take the value V. We want to, uh, to pass over each element inside a vector and uh, add a constant value to each and every member. And again, uh, this, uh, there might be a chance where the uh, x uh, argument of the lambda might uh, actually refer to the same uh, object as the one that is stored as reference inside uh, the lambda itself, okay? So again, 
we have uh, this uh, aliasing. And going uh, into the code, we'll see that if we started off with a complex number of uh, two and two, we want to multiply it by two, should it, we should receive uh, the result of four and four, but, but in fact, we have four and eight, okay? So uh, the imaginary uh, part gets multiplied twice just because of aliasing. And similarly, with the vector example, we started with one, two, three, we want to add the one to each and every element, but after we added one to the first element, we're basically stuck and the rest uh, get, uh, add, uh, get two added to them instead of just one. Okay, cool. Um, another example, not just of uh, variables uh, themselves, but of just buffers, let's think of uh, byte buffers. Okay, and let's uh, think how do we want to uh, copy a buffer of bytes from one location to another. Okay, so this is my own uh, naive implementation of uh, something like a mem copy or, uh, or, or STR uh, copy. Uh, where we take a destination and a source uh, and a size, and we try to just copy bytes one by one from the uh, source to the destination. And I wrote a small uh, test function that tries to see how well it behaves, okay? So this test function uh, basically creates a large buffer with uh, six uh, uh, characters in it uh, to start with, hello, and then a space, okay? And what I want to do is just use whatever uh, mechanism I might want to shift uh, the buffer just one byte uh, uh, to the right, to make some space and put a space character in it. Okay, so I want to create space, hello space, and uh, let's see uh, whether this loop copy function can do it, and we already understand that aliasing is an issue, so it probably won't do what we expect it. And uh, we also uh, want to try and see other uh, functions from the standard library itself and how they uh, uh, can deal with this task. Okay, so we have uh, str copy, strn copy, mem copy, memmove, and the C++ STLs uh, copy and functions that are all meant to basically do the same thing, but maybe they might not do what we expect them when aliasing comes into play. So let's say uh, run this code with uh, Clang 14. Um, loop copy, we're uh, obviously, uh, we know that things uh, are meant to go wrong, and they are, instead of uh, space and hello, we just uh, see H, 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 H all, over, all over the place, because as the while loop iterates, we just uh, move the, the first letter, this H letter, uh, one uh, position uh, over, and then in the next iteration, we already have an H uh, written over there, so we'll uh, copy it over to the next place, and next place, and uh, uh, we're basically, uh, you know, we're lost for, uh, all the data is gone. Uh, if we go to uh, SDR copy, uh, situation looks a little bit better, but still uh, we're not in paradise, I'd say. Um, so uh, it's, it's not a good solution. Let's uh, look at the other uh, alternatives. STR and copy looks uh, uh, nice. We got, we got the hello as we wanted. Similarly for mem copy, mem move, as well as copy n. So we think uh, the situation is good. But if we go on over to a different compiler, uh, Intel compiler in this uh, case, Suddenly, str copy is also uh, uh, broken, as well as uh, mem copy. Things look uh, dire and dire as we uh, uh, continue, and we understand that we're actually in the realm of undefined behavior or implementation-defined behavior. And if we look at the C++ standard and read the documentation, we'll understand that uh, most of the functions uh, in the list here are actually documented to be either undefined behavior, so if you call them with alias buffers, then uh, all bets are off, your entire program is uh, uh, is gone, there's nothing uh, you, can, uh, you can do to reason about it. And even with copy n from uh, the STL, documentation says that you're not in undefined behavior land, but it's implementation defined. There's no guarantee of what the result will look like. So although in the two cases that we saw here, things look good, that's not uh, uh, guaranteed in any way, okay? Uh, a few more examples from uh, uh, using the STL. Um, so first, uh, let's look at the, the erase uh, uh, function, or the erase remove idiom is something that may, some of you may have heard about, uh, where we want to just remove the maximum element uh, from a vector. But in my case, or from a sequence, in my case, let's say that the, the sequence might have duplicate uh, uh, values, and I want to find the maximum element and remove all of its uh, instances within the vector, or the uh, sequence. Uh, so what I'll try to do is use the erase function, the C++ uh, version of the erase remove idiom, and pass just a... Uh, uh, the ampersand of the max element. Max element will give me uh, an iterator to the location where the max element are, uh, exists. I'll use the, uh, the asterisk operator to get the, uh, the value itself in order to raise it. And as you might imagine, things can go uh, wrong uh, with calling these types of things. Uh, that it, it isn't uh, solved in any way by using uh, the ranges uh, version. Um, 
And similarly, we already looked at the copy uh, SDL algorithm for, um, uh, for bytes and buffers. It also works for just general vectors of general objects where things can go wrong if you uh, try to pass uh, ranges that are overlapping uh, from one another. Um, and uh, we already uh, spoke about the fact that it's documented to be faulty. And uh, the documentation for copy says that uh, you can use another algorithm called copy backward if you want to do this exact uh, type of uh, uh, operation. Okay? By the way, in C, you have mem copy and mem move, where mem move is the specific function that's meant uh, for dealing with uh, overlapped uh, buffers. In STL, you have STD copy and STD move. But STD move is totally unrelated to mem move and to copy. That's uh, something else. It has to do with move semantics. Okay, another example uh, is, uh, has to do with iterators, not pointers or references. Um, any object that uh, acts as sort of like a reference, okay, like a smart pointer, an iterator, um, uh, like spans, anything that actually is not owning and perhaps relates to some other object can uh, you know, get us into a situation where several different uh, variables actually look at the same uh, area in memory. Uh, so uh, here we go, and again, we want to use the stable partition algorithm. Um, we want to uh, partition a sequence such that uh, the max element and all of its duplicates are just uh, squeezed into uh, the end of the uh, uh, vector and, and the rest uh, of the members are kept in order at the start of it, being stable. And as you can imagine, if we go to gold ball, things won't look uh, uh, very nice. Um, I should say that uh, the documentation for stable partition and for many STL algorithms say that the uh, lambda expression or the function object that is used for uh, the comparison is not allowed to modify the sequence uh, uh, by itself, okay? But in this case, uh, the, uh, the lambda doesn't modify the sequence. It's a read-only uh, 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 lambda, but it does look and gets earliest with the uh, uh, sequence that we're working with. So this is the code base. I won't go over the code uh, too much, but I can say that the, if we started off with this vector that has uh, um, the sequence uh, where the maximum element is four, it appears multiple times, and uh, if we try to remove it, we should get uh, one, two, one, three. We call this erase, and suddenly we get one, two, uh, one, four, three, four, so only one uh, uh, element uh, just got uh, removed. And if we do the same with the ranges max element, even on the same vector, um, we got another four removed, but, uh, but, but or erased and not all of them. And uh, similarly with uh, uh, the copy operation, uh, we don't, uh, yeah, I think uh, we see it, do we see it here? Um, no, with the copy operation, uh, again, I tried to copy uh, A, B, C, D, just uh, one, uh, uh, one uh, item across, and suddenly we get the, the B uh, element copied and, and overwriting the rest of everything. And uh, again, the stable partition two, and uh, didn't manage to get the maximum element all the way uh, to the right-hand side. We still got uh, this uh, one uh, four item left just uh, in the middle of everything. Okay, so that's... Uh, a shame, and uh, uh, when, when we write our code, we need to be aware of these types of things. Um, one uh, uh, last example I think that I have is not about uh, 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 correction, but more about uh, performance. Let's uh, look at this uh, extreme uh, function foo that I wrote here. It's basically very similar to the ones that we've seen so far. I'm taking a vector of doubles and a coefficient, okay, and I want to multiply each and every item in the vector by the sinus of the coefficient, okay? So obviously we talked uh, uh, before that uh, if a user comes in and try to pass one of the elements in the vector uh, as the coefficient, things can start suddenly go wrong, right? Because uh, once that element uh, gets uh, multiplied by the sinus of itself, then all the rest of the elements will get multiplied by that uh, uh, modified result. But let's say that even this function, even if this function foo is properly documented, and, and says that they, it, it doesn't support uh, aliasing, and it doesn't expect uh, any uh, user that calls it to give you to give a coefficient that is inside the uh, the vector itself. Still, uh, the code itself, as it is, uh, is something that the compiler needs to reason about and think about the cases where aliasing might uh, happen. Even if it's not documented uh, to to support aliasing, the compiler doesn't know it, and compiler still needs to think about aliasing, and that can hinder performance optimizations. Okay, so if I'm trying to put on the uh, perspective of a compiler optimizer and look at this loop and try to think what uh, types of optimizations I might want to do 
and I might not be able to do because of aliasing, there are several such uh, uh, optimizations that can be done or, or can be uh, affected. The first uh, is just uh, the whole notion of a register to memory mapping, okay? Uh, you probably know that uh, uh, most or a lot of uh, assembly code is done not directly on memory addresses, but uh, on registers. And the compiler optimizer's job is to decide which variables do I put in memory or, or work on directly with memory, and which do I move to registers and work on them as registers. Registers are obviously much, much faster. The only problem is the registers do not have addresses, okay? So once I take a, 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 like a variable from memory, put it in a register, I know that any modifications that I do on it without touching the memory, um, I won't, anyone else looking at the memory won't be able to see the effects. And similarly, if uh, I move a variable out to a register and the memory gets changed under the hood or underneath uh, my actions, uh, the register won't be affected. I need to take it into consideration. So if there's any risk of uh, aliasing, the compiler is not allowed to uh, move things into registers and keep them uh, in the registers for a long time. It needs to access memory over and over again just for the sheer risk that someone or something uh, overridden the memory while uh, the algorithm was, was working. And I have to stress again that this doesn't have to do with uh, um, threads or anything like that. It's just about uh, this algorithm by itself changing addresses that are going to be used or get, getting uh, moved in, uh, by, through other variables uh, as registers. Uh, I should also note while we're here that uh, uh, the coefficient is marked as const double reference and it, it is uh, marked as a const, but still in C++, the fact that uh, the variable coefficient is const means that you cannot change its content by using that uh, variable itself. But uh, it's still perfectly legal in C++ to change the content and the value of the coefficient if there's another way to get to that memory, for example, through uh, the vector v, okay? Um, second uh, missed opportunity has to do with the uh, vectorization. Uh, I think uh, Bryce talked a little bit about that uh, in the previous talk. Vectorization is the uh, ability of the compiler to basically take multiple uh, uh, operations and do them in parallel, okay? And again, if uh, an optimizer would look at this uh, type of code, it would try to, to parallelize things, try to uh, do the multiplication several do doubles uh, at a time. But again, if the compiler isn't sure whether this uh, sinus coefficient or, or the coefficient itself is going to be uh, changed while we're doing the copies, it is not able to, uh, to do things in parallel because there's a risk that once uh, I touch that uh, uh, value that is actually pointed to by the coefficient, then I need to uh, uh, you know, try and fix things or I, I might be uh, completely uh, corrupting the memory. So, I, so I'm not able to do vectorization properly in these uh, cases. And uh, one more optimization that a, co a compiler might want to do and is not able to do in a case like this is what's known as expression hoisting, trying to take uh, some expression that uh, should be uh, constant within a loop and moving it outside of the loop, okay? If, I, if uh, a, a normal human being would look at this code, they would think that uh, you should maybe calculate the sinus expression just once. Take the coefficient, calculate the sinus expression, and then go over and just do the multiplications one at, one at a time. But uh, because there's a chance that coefficient itself might change as we are iterating, there's uh, the compiler must be pessimistic and calculate the sinus operation time after time after time. And that can cause a lot of uh, performance uh, uh, penalties. So uh, this is a toy example, a, a re really extreme example. How important can it be? Um, I don't know if you have uh, any guesses, but uh, let's uh, go to uh, QuickBench. And QuickBench basically tells us that this function that takes the coefficient by const reference is 32 times slower uh, than uh, the same function where the coefficient get, gets passed by value. Okay, if the coefficient were, were to get passed by value, then the compiler would know that uh, nothing can alias uh, to it because it's my own value and nothing, it's not pointing to anywhere else. And thus it knows to do all of these optimizations that I talked about earlier. And it can mean uh, that this uh, loop is, can be 30 times faster. Okay? So that's uh, all the uh, examples to get us started, to get us uh, some understanding of what the uh, aliasing really is. And uh, I hope that by now you get the sense that the aliasing is tricky. Um, these are things that uh, when us uh, as humans read the code, we rarely consider it, rarely think about those things, and it can cause some strange and unexpected uh, uh, bugs. Um, usually when we look at code, we assume some independence between variables, some independence between buffers, and uh, we, don't, uh, we don't think that the, the underlying uh, um, you know, machine that runs our code actually works by addresses and not by variables. And uh, compilers, they can't ignore it. Okay, so, so they have to understand that uh, different uh, pointers, different references, different iterators might, might actually look at the same place 
and they have to be pessimistic about it. Uh, and this can cause uh, a lot of uh, performance uh, issues. If you want to learn more about the performance issues and uh, what might be, do, might be done to, uh, to deal with them, you can go uh, tomorrow to Ofex Talk, where he dives deep into aliasing as well as uh, other things. And uh, uh, library writers, as we saw with the uh, uh, mem copy, with stable partitions, etc., they should be aware and try to document what they allow and what they don't allow. They should have uh, clear contracts. And uh, users, us, we should hopefully read the documentation and, uh, and uh, uh, try to uh, behave as, 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 much as the library writers ask us to. And uh, if we don't uh, do it, then it's our fault, I guess. Um, so that was what I meant when I said that uh, all problems in computer science can be solved uh, by another level of indirection, but sometimes too many levels of indirection cause things that uh, are hard to imagine, okay? Um, so we've, we're done with, uh, with, with examples. Let's uh, uh, go uh, one level up toward, to the language itself and what the language tells us. So let's uh, talk a little bit about other languages first. So uh, uh, a lot of uh, the way that C++ deals with aliasing has to do with its uh, C origins, okay? So the C language was uh, one of the first languages where uh, aliasing issues started rising up and propping up. I think the main reason for it was that uh, pointers are very, very prevalent in C, and uh, C was, I think, one of the first languages uh, where uh, pointers were heavily used instead of arrays, instead of strings, instead of matrices. There were pointers everywhere, and when there are pointers everywhere, they start uh, having uh, these uh, kinds of issues. And this was so uh, prevalent in uh, the C language that in the C99 standard, so more than 20 years ago, there was a new keyword added to the C language called restrict. Okay, and the restrict uh, uh, keyword is something like a, uh, a qualifier, like a const qualifier in C or a volatile uh, or R value reference uh, uh, in C. The restrict keyword is a qualifier that you can put on a pointer, usually uh, an argument to a function. And a code block where there's a restrict pointer is basically a code block where we, uh, as uh, programmers, uh, basically guarantee to the uh, compiler hey, uh, I want to uh, give you a guarantee that any access to the memory uh, that this pointer points to is going to be done directly via this pointer or this variable. Okay, if there are any other variables that are pointing uh, to the same location uh, and, and I'm going to use them in tandem with this restricted pointer, then it's, it's my fault, okay? And uh, you shouldn't uh, take that uh, under consideration. And this way, using the restrict uh, pointer uh, or the restrict uh, qualifier, uh, we, we both convey to the compiler that it's okay to optimize things as if there's no aliasing, and we convey to whoever calls our function that we, we expect this uh, restrict uh, uh, behavior uh, with the arguments that get passed to me, okay? Um, C the restrict keyword is not part of the C++ language, but uh, most C++ compilers, they have some support for C, so they do have some non-standard support for the restrict keyword. Sometimes you need to write a few underscores before or after the restrict keyword if you want it, and uh, the compilers will sometimes do their best. It's non-standard, so uh, uh, you know, try it uh, at your own risk. Uh, Fortran is a different language where uh, these things uh, come up. Again, it's very, very popular in uh, the scientific uh, world. And there, uh, the typical general notion is that uh, aliasing should be undefined behaviors. And so they generally say, if you write code that has several references, uh, you should make sure not to, not to do aliasing. You have other mechanisms if you really want to move a buffer uh, just one uh, side across. Don't, don't try to give different pointers or different uh, references to the same uh, location. And uh, I have to say that because uh, uh, the, the Fortran compilers weren't really uh, adhering to it or sometimes uh, they, they, they used aliasing or they tried to be uh, aliasing aware, um, although the standard didn't say so, many programmers uh, started relying on it, so many compilers started adding non-standard flags to get the non-standard behavior that uh, uh, the programmers wanted. Uh, Swift and Rust are newer languages um, that are also, uh, you know, had, had to deal with this issue and think about this issue. And there, there's a whole different mechanism trying to keep uh, the programmers safe. Okay, and they basically try to track down when references are getting created to an object, when mutable references are getting created, and they're trying to, uh, to have the goal of really prohibiting uh, the language from letting people cause cases of aliasing, okay? So many cases where aliasing might occur in Rust or Swift actually generate uh, compiler errors, okay? So the language is a little more uh, um, constrained to that effect. There are things that uh, are harder to do in Swift and Rust, or if you want to do them, you have to mark your code as unsafe. Uh, but uh, as long as you stay within uh, that area, 
uh, you know that there's are, there are lesser risks of aliasing. signal. Okay? Let's uh, get uh, uh, to C++. So as mentioned, the C++ hasn't adopted the restrict keyword. It's been in C for over 20 years. There have been a lot of discussions, as I understand it, about uh, trying to, to add it to the C++ language. And so far, there's, there hasn't been uh, progress made. I think there's a consensus in the committee that uh, this is something that uh, can't really uh, be done uh, in, in a safe and correct way. Um, I think one main reason for that has to, has to be with uh, function signature qualifiers and just uh, the, the attributes of, uh, of variables. As we mentioned, in C, we already have uh, const qualifiers, volatile qu qualifiers, L value, R value, etc. And each of these qualifiers uh, um, cause us to uh, write many, many overloads. It has effects on overload resolution. If we try to add just another uh, qualifier, when do you think, uh, what, what does it mean for overloaded functions? C can we have two overloaded functions with the same name, one accepting a restrict uh, argument and another uh, accepting the, ex the exact uh, same uh, type but, but non-restricted? Uh, how will the compiler uh, decay from one to another, et cetera? And, and then there's also the notion of uh, the closure objects inside lambdas and, uh, and function objects uh, as well, where I might want to pass this uh, restrict or the, the, the potentially bad buffer or bad object through a constructor uh, of, of an object and uh, make sure that uh, as it's stored inside the, inside the closure, it keeps its uh, restricted nature. So those, those are things that are probably, that are not, not so easy, not so uh, simple, and uh, the decision was to maybe and to hold off with just adding the restrict keyword to C++. One thing that C++ does give us is uh, uh, what's known as the strict aliasing rule. Okay, the strict aliasing rule basically says that if you created two different objects of two different types, they have to be on different uh, regions in memory. Okay, so if I have a function that accepts two pointers or two references to, to two objects of two different types, there's, there's no chance that they will reside in the same memory. So if I'm accessing members of the, those two objects, there's no uh, chance that they might uh, overlap with each other. And there are a few uh, uh, caveats to this rule. Um, first of all, uh, the car uh, type and the STD colon colon byte, they are allowed to alias with everything. And uh, then there are also uh, the notion of similar types, like the same type, but uh, just with const or volatile or sinus changes or a uh, base derived relationship. Are some are places where it's typical and normal for these types of aliasing to occur. And in the C++ standard, anything else is undefined behavior. And uh, to that effect, a strong type defs are a mechanism that can help us uh, reduce the risk uh, of aliasing and, and might also potentially give us uh, some uh, performance improvement because we are also conveying to the compiler that uh, different uh, uh, variables are not of the same type and thus cannot alias from each other. And most op uh, compiler optimizers relax those rules and uh, they favor uh, the chance of aliasing uh, over uh, performance. Again, more details on that in tomorrow's talk by OFIC. Um, the STL itself also does a lot of work trying to, uh, to document the effects of aliasing and uh, also try to mitigate them. So for example, uh, trying to call pushback on a vector with its uh, first argument. As you can understand, there's, it's a subtle, uh, uh, there's a subtle uh, problem here, a subtle issue here, because uh, a, a vector might want to reallocate, and as it's reallocating, it might uh, want to start uh, moving things around. And if it starts uh, moving the front object before it uh, manages to uh, put that same front object at, at the end of the uh, resulting buffer, things can go wrong. Uh, but uh, STL specifically hurt the performance of pushback a little bit in order to make sure that things like this will work as uh, people would expect them. Similarly, STL colon colon bind, which uh, basically creates a closure object, um, holds its closure by value and not by reference, just to make sure that the risk of aliasing is uh, lower. Okay, cool. So a little bit uh, uh, more about uh, strong type defs. Um, so as pro you might uh, already know, strong type defs are just types that encapsulate a different type, and uh, they are much stronger than regular type defs, but because uh, they cannot uh, be uh, easily uh, converted from one to another. There are no implicit conversions, and uh, the compiler really treats them as different uh, uh, classes. Okay, and the, let's uh, see, uh, let's look at a motivating example of uh, how the compiler uses uh, strong aliasing to give us uh, better results than what we might uh, think of, of otherwise. So here we have two structs, A and B, both containing an integer. This uh, may alias function, as we can see, basically changes the A argument, and then looks at the B argument to decide whether to return zero or one, okay? And if uh, both A and B point to the same location, then this change might affect the value of B, okay? 
So if they point to the same location, uh, and that location holds the value of uh, one, for example, then after this uh, addition operation, the value becomes two, and we need to return zero. But if uh, things point to different addresses, then I need to, uh, I, I can just look at the value B, uh, add it, and, and, and check if it was, was uh, equal to two, okay? So let's uh, try to look at the implementation of this may alias function receiving two A's, or an A and a B. And uh, here we can see uh, it uh, from, from Goldbolt, I think this is client 14. And uh, what we can see here that uh, both, both uh, implementations are very, very similar with one small difference with the, within the compare. Both comparisons actually compare uh, uh, the, the, like the, the variable to the number two, but in the first case, we load from memory again, okay? So we uh, read uh, B from memory in this first line here, do the addition into memory, and then we load from memory again just to make sure that the two pointers didn't point to the same location. While with the second uh, implementation, we just compare the same EAX that we loaded uh, here uh, just one more time. The compiler was able to understand these are two different types, so ca they can't be aliased, so I was managed to save us a load from memory. Okay, questions? Cool. Um, so uh, this leads me to some tips and ideas on how we can avoid the uh, pitfalls around aliasing. So first and foremost, try to pass arguments by value. Okay, do th use work by value and not by reference. These, this uh, can uh, usually help us uh, reason about things. When we have to create multiple copies, then uh, uh, there's no chance of uh, things getting aliased. Value semantics are really popular right now. There are a lot of talks about it, and many things. Many people think that's uh, a be better way to think about the uh, code. And uh, with move semantics uh, already 10 years uh, in the making, together with the copy elision, even copy elision guarantees. Um, these uh, types of uh, copies into and outside of functions can many times be much cheaper than we think about. So uh, take that uh, into consideration. And uh, if you write functions that accept the arguments by value, you might also want to, you know, uh, have be extra, uh, uh, extra nice and think about uh, supporting a STD reference uh, wrapper known as STD colon colon ref or CREF. Sometimes uh, um, you know, an expert user might try to pass you uh, a reference wrapper by value, well, in fact, uh, look, uh, meaning to, to give you a reference or something, and if you can write your algorithm such that support it supports it, it might be nice and just uh, pass on the um, responsibility uh, to the user to, to understand if they're, what they're doing makes sense or not. Um, second uh, uh, tip is just to use uh, strong type defs libraries and, and unit libraries. Okay, these are the, the libraries that basically tell users and tell the compiler that different objects have different types. Um, it, it will cause uh, much less uh, confusion uh, both to programmers and to compilers. Um, so it's really uh, cool. And uh, next, I'd say that like the STL, like, uh, uh, like, like anyone else, try to document your code uh, and, and its aliasing assumptions. Try to understand what your contract is and uh, read the other people's documentations. If you have a large user base and you write a library, try to write your code a little bit defensively, okay? Defensive code means that maybe uh, you want to verify your contract, okay? And if uh, someone doesn't obey by your contract, don't just uh, immediately go to undefined behavior land, but uh, try to tell them, hey, I'm going to throw an exception, I'm going to give you an error, uh, et cetera. And maybe in the future we'll have uh, some standard mechanism for contracts. Uh, or, or maybe even try to widen your contract. Try to uh, uh, allow people to uh, use aliasing, even if it hurts performance, sometimes uh, the users will thank you. Uh, and if possible, uh, you can even create mechanisms to let the users uh, control the contract uh, or, or control what they intend to do and let you uh, deal with it as best you can. So let's uh, look at an example of such a defensive code in action. So here's an unsafe uh, apply function, okay? It's very similar to the ones that we've seen before. Um, it accepts a span of some value and a specific item uh, as well and wants to operate some binary operation on each and every item in the span and the value v, okay? And as mentioned, this is unsafe, both uh, in terms of uh, the fact that if you pass a v inside the span, then uh, the results will be not uh, intuitive, and secondly, because the compiler is not aware of whether this v might be inside the span or not, so the compiler is not able to optimize. So um, here's an example of how to, we can use, uh, we can write the same function with some uh, user control about the contract, okay? So what did I do here? I'm basically creating a, two tag types, uh, by ref and, and by val, where we basically try to let the user control 
do they want uh, to pass uh, by value and, and pay the cost of a copying because the, of, of a copy because the, they want us they want the library to be uh, aliasing safe um, or uh, they want us uh, to work by reference because they don't want to pay for the copy and they maybe uh, know that in case of uh, uh, aliasing they will get uh, undefined uh, behavior undefined results and how do we uh, actually implement it then uh, the function itself will still get the, the value by const reference as cheaply as possible, try to move it in. But then um, I'll create another variable v, which is uh, of a different type. It's either a, a new t, a copy of, of uh, that reference that I got, uh, or uh, a const t reference. This, by the way, is not optimal in cases of uh, temporary objects that are being uh, passed in, I think. I think there might be uh, some better ways to do it, but this, uh, this should give you an example of how you can write code that is a little more uh, uh, I guess a user controllable where the user can either uh, choose use the default or override the default and uh, get a different behavior based on what they want. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, one, uh, one other opportunity or, or possibility is to just write a safe implementation. Okay, and the safe implementation will actually check at runtime whether aliasing took place or not. Okay, so uh, I just start off by writing this. Uh, uh, if statement that actually tries to check whether this uh, variable v is inside the span or not. If I know that uh, uh, it's inside the span, then I need to uh, make a copy and, uh, and, and run like that. Otherwise, I can go uh, by reference and things uh, should be good, okay? And uh, if the compiler is nice enough, it might be also be able to optimize this uh, second call here by knowing that uh, if we reach this far, then there is no aliasing. And whether the compiler is nice enough, that's uh, uh, left to, to, for you to, to look uh, in your code base and at your compilers. Okay, and this uh, type of uh, bounce checking or alias checking uh, can be sometimes very, very easy, like here. Sometimes it's uh, more complex. Okay, so let's uh, uh, move ahead into uh, the future. Okay, uh, so in the future, uh, uh, there's a lot of discussion about uh, what uh, else can be done uh, in C++ to, to better help us. Um, so, as mentioned, the, uh, the restrict keyword uh, is used in C. Uh, there were discussions about it. I said, uh, as I said, I don't think it'll, uh, it'll, it'll be uh, standardized soon. Um, then there's uh, the notion of alias set. Okay, alias set was, a, uh, again, a quite uh, old proposal from 2014. I think it's, uh, there's not a lot of traction on it right now. I don't think it will, it will stay uh, uh, in the running, but uh, the idea was to also add some annotations uh, to uh, various variables, various members, etc., trying to uh, uh, tell the compiler, tell the users what is expected in terms of uh, similarities, that these variables might come from the same memory region as other variables, and these variables have to be disjoint from, from uh, one another. Okay? This has some similarities. Uh, if you know uh, the Rust uh, uh, lifetime annotations, this, I think you have some similarities between this suggestion and that. And again, as I mentioned, it's, this suggestion has been... Uh, sort of like uh, hanging in the vine. I don't know if it will go anywhere. Another suggestion was uh, to take a, a span, an empty span, and uh, give them some, uh, uh, some extra attributes on their own. The, the uh, main, I guess, uh, observation was that uh, uh, span and empty span are specifically uh, classes or objects that are very, very prone to aliasing effects. So there was uh, a suggestion to make these uh, classes uh, uh, attributable or uh, uh, modifiable by some extra tag, uh, such that both the compiler and uh, whoever uses those spans will be aware of uh, uh, their, this restrict uh, uh, possibility, okay? And the idea was that uh, if I have a span that is, has restrict access, then again, I must uh, conform and do not uh, pass uh, this span together with a different span that it points to the same uh, location, okay? And this too, is from 2018, and it was voted out of uh, the standard. Well, span was uh, introduced uh, to the language, and the MD span is going to be introduced in the C++ 23 without these uh, qualifiers, and uh, I think uh, it seems that uh, this uh, won't be added th at this stage. Another uh, solution or proposal was uh, std colon colon disjoint, uh, where uh, the idea was to write a, a single common function that basically does the bounce checks that uh, I showed you uh, earlier, try to look at, uh, it's sort of like a function that accepts uh, several arguments and should return true or false on whether they are disjoint or not. And the idea was that uh, when, once we have uh, contracts inside the language, anyone who wants to create contracts related to 
aliasing. They won't need to write them themselves. They won't need to write the, their own contracts. They'll have this uh, a tool in their toolbox called STD Shui, where they could easily say in a consistent manner that they, I want to make sure that these two variables are disjoint for in, from each other, et cetera. The, again, this was a, a proposal. I don't know how, how well it's going within the committee. And uh, uh, lastly, uh, there's the lifetime safety uh, proposal uh, by, from Herb Sutter and, and, and friends. Uh, which aims to uh, add some uh, mechanisms uh, to the guideline support library and uh, to, to compilers and enhance the uh, core guidelines uh, to allow some static analysis tools where although code that has aliasing might compile, the default should be uh, to ban passing non-owning pointers uh, that alias. So uh, some mechanisms uh, where we could annotate our code or we could uh, uh, tell the compilers some things about uh, our, our pointers and the, the compilers can do some static analysis and uh, give us uh, harsh warnings and maybe even uh, stop us uh, uh, from, from creating uh, binaries if we uh, don't, uh, if we happen to write code that may alias. So this is sort of like uh, something that can turn our, uh, move us in, into, I guess, uh, sort of like uh, the Rust uh, world or the Swift world without actually changing the language too much, but just with adding some static analysis uh, abilities where the compiler will only generate warnings and only if we uh, agree or want to, we can ask the compiler to stop the uh, compilation. Okay? So these are some proposals. And now we uh, have a few more minutes. Uh, I'll talk about uh, some notions and relations between aliasing and unions, okay? So a uh, union, I, I assume uh, many of you uh, are aware, is a mechanism where by intentionally we have different uh, uh, object types living in the same memory uh, location, okay? But the thing is that uh, although they, they can live in the same memory location, they should not live in the same memory location at the same time, okay? At any point in time, only one of the uh, alternatives of the union uh, sh should be active and access as, uh, to that memory as, as a different uh, uh, alternative should be illegal, should be undefined behavior. And the STD variant, for those of you uh, who don't know it, is a type-safe uh, version within the STL that basically uh, enforces this, uh, this behavior. It doesn't let us uh, access uh, the memory inside the union from, a, from the incorrect uh, uh, type and basically throws an exception or gives us a null, et cetera, if, if we try to misbehave. And, uh, but the interesting thing is that C++ isn't a, a, a strict and isn't harsh about all of these use cases of uh, looking at the union that has one active uh, alternative through a pointer or through uh, a looking glass of, of, the, of a different alternative. The C++ has a specific, uh, uh, I guess, uh, exception, uh, talking about unions of objects that are standard layout, okay? And standard layout is a set of uh, requirements of, of objects, and mainly it, it has to do with things like uh, plain old data types, or POD uh, from, from the C language, types that have, uh, uh, I guess, uh, members uh, that are all in the same, uh, access level, like all are public or all are private or all are uh, protected. They, there are several, uh, they, don't, they are not allowed to have any virtual uh, functions. Uh, there's some rules about uh, the, what they may or may not uh, inherit from. And if I have a union uh, of two objects that are in both of the, or two types, and both are standard layout types, and they have what's known as a common prefix, their first prefix, their first few uh, members are of the same uh, uh, types, then it's actually legal in C++ to have a union where one of the uh, objects, uh, or one of the types is active, and I look at uh, those prefix members through a pointer of a different uh, type. And this is really uh, strange to think about, but it is obviously very meaningful from the C language. Was there a question? Okay. Um, uh, but it basically implies that strict aliasing has some limits. Okay, and I don't know if it's, uh, uh, these limits are uh, bugs in the standard or bugs in a compiler or if these are intentional, but let's uh, look at uh, uh, some code, okay? So we looked uh, uh, earlier at this uh, may alias uh, uh, function that uh, can receive two objects of two types and uh, uh, try to modify one of the objects and look at the other object to decide what to return. And we've already seen the code for, the, for, uh, for this uh, function on, on several instantiations. Now let's uh, try to add unions into the mix. Okay, so I'll create a union of, uh, uh, of, of those two alternatives. Okay, and, and now let's try to think what happens if I write a function that accepts a single argument A, or th a single variable of type A and call me alias, or a single union and call me alias with its two different members. Okay, and the thing is that uh, 
those two structs right now, they are standard layout and they have uh, this shared common prefix. So it is perfectly legal to access both u.a and uh, u.b um, regardless of what is the currently active uh, type of the alias u, okay? Of the union u. So what do you think uh, is going to happen here? Let's look at the code. So uh, the alias a function, it already knows that these two objects are the same, okay? So it basically manages to, uh, uh, to just read the object once, uh, multiply it and write the result, and it compares it to one, okay? Why does it compare it to one? Because it knows that uh, one plus one equals two. So it understands that if uh, the i value was initially one, and after the uh, uh, addition, it became two, and then we need to return a different value. So the comparison is to the number one. Uh, on the other hand, with the, with the u uh, alternative, we again read the, uh, uh, read the value just once, because we know that this is exact, exact, exactly one location in memory. We compare it to two, then we uh, write, the, uh, write our result and, and, and return. So as you can see, these are, uh, I guess, functions that are, sh should behave, I guess, uh, similarly, should, be, should, should, do, uh, uh, should work the same, but they are not the same. They work on the same me memory, uh, et cetera. And uh, as far as I understand, this should all be well-defined behavior. And, I, and uh, the problem is that I, write, I try the same code with different compilers and different optimization levels, and suddenly I saw that, uh, yes, uh, um, uh, GCC with optimization level two uh, does the comparison with, with the number two. Optimization level one com does the comparison with the number one. Um, Clang uh, with optimization level two compares with two, and uh, I have uh, the same GCC here, so uh, you can disregard it. So as we can see, we are going, we're, we're in uncharted territories. There's a good chance that I'm mistaken and this is just completely undefined behavior, even in the standard, but I think that the entire notion of uh, this uh, common prefix and standard layout is specifically meant to allow these types of things, so that's the way it is. Um, and now, uh, moving from, a, uh, from unions to variants, I want to give uh, one more motivating example from, of like non-standard uses of, uh, of aliasing type of things. Um, that have to do with state machines. Okay, state machines are a typical use case for using variants, okay, where you have a, a single uh, uh, location memory or a single entity in the world, and we know that as time goes by, we, we might change state, and, and only one state is valid at any point in time. Uh, so it's, it's really very common to use uh, variants for that. And uh, the way that we take a variant and change its type is either by using its uh, a, like a conversion assignment operator or by uh, using the in-place function. Okay, and they, uh, so those, those are the ways where I take a variant that's currently of a single of state and convert it to a different state. Um, and the observation that I want to make is many times those different states are actually quite similar. They share information. And when I convert and move from one state to another, I actually want to keep some of my state intact. Okay, so for example, if I have a variant of a working person or a resting person, then obviously, um, the working person might have some more uh, uh, details about the, the profession or how tired he is, et cetera, and the resting person might have information about uh, you know, which uh, TV channels he's, he's watching or whatever, um, but still, they both have a name and the name might be the same, and they both might even inherit from the same base class. And uh, the question is how is, how is one to uh, do a state change from a working person to a resting person? Uh, should we use uh, the um, this, uh, Casting operator should be used in place and how. Um, similarly, if you use uh, strong type diffs a lot, there are these notion of semantic only strong type diffs. Um, for example, a cat and a happy cat. Okay, they are exactly the same object, but they are semantically different, and they are sometimes used in what's called um, um, like type-based uh, design, where we have different types uh, to indicate the different states uh, of an object. And again, uh, moving from one state to another doesn't change the age of the cat or its uh, food preferences, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so steadily, those state change function uh, in, uh, in STD variant are, are considered the undefined behavior. Uh, if you try and read the state, the previous state as you are uh, writing the, the new state. The way that these, all of these functions work is basically that they uh, destroy the existing uh, uh, element 
and then go and start creating the new one, then cause, calling in place with the new object. So it's very, very inconvenient and very hard uh, to, to do this in place uh, properly. Um, okay, and the SDL here chose performance over safety. Um, I don't have much time, so I'll just go quickly and say that there are various uh, 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 things that you can write in your code that are wrong, okay? And one relatively uh, tricky thing that uh, you can do, to, which is right, which is actually to uh, move the uh, current uh, state into some temporary and then call in place that will move it back into the variant. So uh, you should be aware of that. And this, uh, yeah, leads us to the summary slide. Uh, where I uh, remind us all that uh, aliasing is tricky uh, because uh, people inherently assume independence, although the code sometimes isn't. Uh, value semantics are a good thing uh, to work with and to, uh, to reason about. Uh, strong type depths are here to help us. If you write code, implement it with care, document it with care, and uh, know that uh, people in the committee are working to try and help us in the future. Um, and uh, you should know how to communicate uh, with others and with your compiler as you write uh, your code. So uh, thank you very much. I'll be happy to take uh, questions.